I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. God is good. God is good. And all the time, Psalm 100 verse 5, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. And we are in this generation, and the truth of God exists in this generation. Oh, that there are people in this generation who love the truth of God. Happy Sabbath, everyone. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I should say very quickly, God made seven days. He only blessed one. This one. It began sunset last night. It will end sunset today. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I welcome you. I'm very touched and moved to see all of you. May the Lord bless you individually for coming to worship him, the holy God, on his holy day. I welcome those of you online, wherever you are. May the God of goodness, graciousness, and generosity shower your life with blessings. I am particularly delighted to welcome those of you online who are not Seventh-day Adventists, I yearn and long for the day when you will become Seventh-day Adventists. That's my desire and my prayer. Thank you for joining us, my little brothers and little sisters, wherever you are online, in whatever country. Thank you for loving Jesus and for listening to his word. And when I make a call for people to give their lives to Christ, my little brother, my little sister, I am speaking to you. God wants you to give your little heart to him. For those of you in my presence or in God's presence seated before me who are not Seventh-day Adventists, may I see your hands, please. You are not a Seventh-day Adventist. Ah, God bless you. God bless you. Where the, ah, God bless you. Where, where the hands? Where the, move the hands so I can see them. 
God, God bless you. God bless you. Let me say a prayer for you. And for those online, dear God, every night I pray for our visitors. It is not a routine prayer. I am praying from the foundation of my soul. And I ask you now, bless our visitors, dear God. Do something for them that will leave them surprised and humbled. Whatever they need is, meet that need and exceed it because that's the kind of God you are. Put a special blessing on the children, I pray. In Jesus' name, let God's people say amen and amen. I feel, can I tell you how I feel? I feel weak. And so I'm asking all of you online who are watching, pray for me, that the Lord will strengthen me. I don't know there's a preacher anywhere who stands in a pulpit and feels strong. I've never met one, and I never will. So pray for me and simply say to God, sustain that weak man, and God will do that. Our subject for today, the power of helplessness. What did I say? Before I jump into that message, if you're not using this, turn it off completely. If you're using it, make sure there is no sound. We want to preserve reverence in the house of God. Can you say amen? The second favor I politely request is that you pray for me while I'm speaking. This is no joke. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. When you ask God to put his words in my mouth, that is 100% the will of God and he will hear you. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. And those are the words I earnestly desire to speak. They will glorify God and they will change your lives if you allow them. And favor number three, think. Isaiah 118, come now. Let us reason together, saith the Lord. Let us pray. Father in heaven, I am glad you're God and no one else. I thank you for Christ, your son, who is equal with yourself. I thank you for the ministry of the Holy Ghost, who is equally divine. I thank you, dear God, for holy angels that have kept me from a thousand dangers. And I thank you for the presence of men and women in this building and online who love you. In my weakness now, dear God, I lean my full weight upon you. Don't move. If you move, I will fall. Stand strong, Father, as this weak man leans upon you. Put your words in my mouth, dear God. Put the ideas in my mind and the humility of Christ in my heart. Bless everyone listening be particularly sweet to the little children, Father, and be gracious to the guests. But, Father, bless us all. I must pray for the country of Nigeria. I'm asking you, Father, you love every single person in this country. Bless this country. Bless the leaders. Remind them that they are in their positions by your pleasure. Father, Every country connected now, bless the leaders, bless the citizens, Father. And through the restless energy of your spirit, convince them that a life given to you is the only safe life to live. Now, Father, I'm about to speak. You speak through me. If I've offended you, forgive me immediately. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Luke 18. Reading from verse 9. Luke 18, 
Reading from verse 9, it is 23 minutes after 11. I'll release you hopefully before 12.30, one hour, maybe shorter than that. Luke 18, reading from verse 9. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. 2,000 years ago, there were people like that. 2,000 years later, there are still people who think they are righteous and others are wicked. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee, the other a publican. And for the sake of translation, the Pharisee simply meant the one was a ruler in the church. The publican was regarded as the worst sinner in the land. This high man and this low man. A publican and a Pharisee, a Pharisee and a publican went into the temple for the same purpose to worship. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are. Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Verse 12, I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast saying, God, finish the verse. Be merciful to me, a sinner. Verse 14. I tell you. Who said I tell you? Jesus. He doesn't lie. I tell you. This man, the low man, went down to his house justified rather than the other. Justified means made right with God. Right in the sight of God. If not in the sight of society. What did this man do? Let's look at what he said. Verse 13. And the publican standing afar off. He acknowledges he does not deserve to be way up front in the church. And there's nothing wrong in sitting up front. I read a study years ago that the most successful students in the university are those who sit close to the front. So some of you may need to change your seating patterns. Standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes. He acknowledges his nothingness and his helplessness. What's our subject? The power of helplessness. Listen to what he said. God be merciful. The person who shows mercy is the person with power. The person needing the mercy is a helpless person. I cannot help myself have mercy. That's all he said. Jesus said at that moment he was made right with God. Let us go back to 11 and 12. Our subject the power of helplessness. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners and just adulterers or even as this publican. He tells God what he is not. Are you with me? I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't gamble. I'm ready for heaven. I don't run around. I don't cheat. I don't take bribes. Father, I must be qualified for heaven. I don't do these things. And it's good not to do them. Verse 12. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Now he tells God what he does. I'm a vegetarian. I drink distilled water. Soy milk. 
I don't walk down certain streets with a bar in it. I wear long skirts. I whatever. I qualify for heaven. If those things qualify you for heaven, what is it you don't need? Jesus. If you could eat your way to heaven, you don't need Jesus. Now, we ought to eat a certain way. Come on, say amen. Because God tells us how to eat. Never engage in a behavior that dims your view of the fact that only Christ can save you. I can't dress my way to heaven, but I ought to look like a child of God when I'm dressed. Can you say amen? What am I trying to say? You and I need to understand our condition apart from Christ. Remember our scripture reading? Let us go to Romans chapter 8. We read 7 and 8. Romans 8, 7 and 8. Well, let's read from 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. They that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death even while you're alive. And to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, verse 7, you may read with me. Because the carnal mind, that's the way we're born, is enmity against God. Meaning, we are born opposed to God. We are born opposed to to truth. We are born opposed to righteousness because there is none in us at birth. At birth. What did Jesus say about the flesh? Listen to Christ in John 6 verse 63. Go there with me. We were in Romans. Two books back. We come to John, chapter 6, verse 63, our subject, the power of helplessness. When you found it, say amen, or when it's up there. It is the spirit that quickeneth or gives life. The flesh, that's the way you and I are born, profiteth nothing. The flesh, the way you and I are born, profiteth nothing. Finish the verse. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Jesus said, our natural condition is useless for the transaction of salvation. Let's go to Romans 7. Back to Romans, chapter 7, verse 18. The apostle Paul, who called himself the chief of sinners, so he knows what it's like to have a weak condition. Romans 7, verse 18, For I know that in me, that is what? In my flesh, keep reading, dwelleth no good thing. Listen to me carefully. There is nothing good in the carnal nature. Let's go back to Jesus. John 3. John 3. We read verse 6. This is Christ. Who knows us better than the creator? Do you have John chapter 3 verse 6? That which is born of the spirit, come on, is spirit. And that which is born of the flesh is flesh. In other words, the flesh is 100% flesh. Meaning it has no what? No spirit. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. 100% spirit, meaning it has no flesh. Christ wants to move you and me from flesh. How much percent of flesh? To spirit, what percent? 100. From 100% the child of Satan to 100% the child of Christ or God. With Christ as our brother. Let the Bible show you what's in here. Why you and I can't save ourselves. Let us go to Mark chapter 7. 
Mark 7, we'll read from verse 20. Our subject, the power of helplessness. And I hope you're praying for me. I really do. Decisions have to be made for Christ this morning. The best time to decide for Christ is when? Today, not tomorrow. You do not have a receipt for tomorrow. You don't have a receipt for one o'clock. What book did I say? Mark. What chapter? Seven. What verse? Twenty. Let me pray again. Father in heaven, remove me in a certain sense from this desk and take my place. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And he said, that which cometh out of the man, finish the verse, that defileth the man. Concentrate. What is defilement? Give me a small word. Small word. Sin. Uncleanness, a bigger word. Listen to Christ. That which defileth the man, that which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. In other words, you are not made a sinner by your environment because the environment is without. We love to blame the environment. I'm a murderer because I was born in a poor community. I'm a thief because of this, because of that, because of that. The Bible says sin comes from the inside out, not from the outside in. That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. Now, verse 21, for from within, out of the heart of man, proceed what? Tell me, evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, and this is just a partial list. Finish the verse on the next verse. All these what evil things come from where? And mm -hmm, that's who we are by nature, whether we commit them or not. That's all we are. Now, go to Galatians 5. Galatians 5, we were in Mark, several books to the right. You'll event, well, it's up there. Galatians 5, we'll read from verse 19. When it's up there, let me know. Read with me. But the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Now, remember Jesus said, that which is born of the flesh is all flesh. We will look at the flesh and see if there's one good thing in it. Are you with me? We are going to look at the flesh. Now, but the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Come on. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings. What does the next expression say? And such like. There are more just like those we just read, in other words. Now, look at that list again. Verse 19 to 21. Remember Jesus said, that which is born of the flesh is all flesh. Now, can you find one good thing in that list? No. Because the flesh is all and that's the way we are born. That person cannot save himself. That person needs help from without. Because within, it's all ruin. The person needs help from without. And the finest clothes you wear will not change. Galatians 5, 19-21. The highest office in the land will not change. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. That's where we are by nature. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus, he must be what? And come as a different species. That species is spiritual. Now, let us go to verse 22 and 23. Read with me. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Finish that verse. Against such, uh-huh, there's no law. 
which means there's no condemnation. Look at verse 19 again. Look at the list. First one. Come on. Adultery. Is there a law against that? Yes. What's the next one? Is there a law against that? Go down the list, 19 to 21. There is a law against everyone. Mm -hmm. 22 and 23, no law. Which means, 19 to 21, that's Satan's character. 22, 23, God's character. Nineteen to twenty-one, we come into the world with that condition. Even if you live your life a hundred years, you've never committed a murder, fornication, adultery, theft, violence, but you died without Christ. You are no different from the person who practices it, because we're sinners not only by what we do, we just by our con. Condition, our condition makes us unfit for God's presence. Now, when you come to Christ, listen carefully. Father, give me the words, please. When you come to Christ, here's what he does. It is so astonishing, few people believe it. 19 to 21 belongs to you and Satan. 22 to 23 belongs to the Father, the Son, the Spirit. That's their character. When a sinner, this is what Christ did for the publican in Luke 18, verse 13 and 14. Christ takes 19 through 21. That belongs to whom? Come on, say it loudly. Us. And puts it on himself. He takes 22 and 23. That belongs to whom? Him. And puts it where? On us. In an instant. When you say like the public and God. Tell me. Be merciful to me. A sinner. In that instant. If you are genuine. In your cry. Christ takes 19 through 21. Or the father takes it. And puts it on Jesus. Takes 22 to 23. And puts it on you. And you stand before God as if what? Say it loudly. As if you never sinned. Look at 22 to 23. Put it up on the board, my expert who's in charge of this. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Question for you, which one of those is a sin? None. That's what Christ puts on you when you say, God, I'm sorry, have mercy, save me. Which means, if there's a murderer listening to me now somewhere, you are a murderer. You are a drug dealer. You have ruined people's lives. You come to Christ genuinely. You say, Father, I'm sorry, forgive me, have mercy. God takes your life of sin and puts it on Jesus and blames Jesus for the murders you committed. He blames Jesus for what you've done because you've given your life to Christ. What did John the Baptist say? Behold the Lamb of God that does what? Take it away. The word there is to carry. Why did Jesus die? Because of sin. Who sins? Our sins. The only reason for death is sin. Christ died as a sinner who of course never sinned. But he died as one of us sinners. The Bible says he was numbered with the transgressors. Even though he never sinned. When you come Helpless to God. What's our subject? God cannot resist a helpless person. Do you hear me? 
We look to people. We look to professionals. We look to the government. We look to everybody. And there's a place for that. Don't misunderstand me. How often do we look to God? Let me say it again. You look incredulous. You don't believe it. Let the Bible explain it differently. Go to 2 Corinthians 5. Let's read verse 21. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. It is a quarter to, we have good time. It's a quarter to 12. I hope I'm right about that. 2 Corinthians 5, reading verse 21. It is one of the most important verses in the entire Bible. Let me pray again. Father in heaven, this subject is so important. God, continue to pour your wisdom into my head that I may speak it by the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Read microscopically. Then I'll ask you some questions. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now we have some nouns and we have some pronouns. We need to identify them. Before we do that, we read again. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now let's identify who is him, who is he, who is us, who is whatever. For he, who is that? God the Father, ah, very, very good. Ah, God bless you. God the Father, for he hath made him who is him. She's, ah, yes, ah. You're delighting my soul. Thank you. For he, God, hath made him Christ to be sin. God made him to be sin. Keep reading. For us. Now, who knew no sin? To whom does that apply? Ah, you're scoring a perfect score so far. That we, who are we? The S-I-N-N, come on. Sinners might be made, what? The righteousness of God in who's him? Jesus Christ. Now. There is a word that occurs twice in that verse. It's the word made. Let's read again. Somebody please pray for me. You read out loud. For he, God the Father, hath made him Jesus. God had to do something to make Christ sin for us. Are you with me? God the Father did something to his sinless son to make him sin for us. Because the son never sinned. So he did not make himself sin for us. The father, I mean in the sense that he did not sin, he did not make himself a sinner. The father made him to be sin for us. Notice the father did it. That we might be made there are two makings you identify them what's the first one the father come on made christ to be for us because christ couldn't do it he was sinless finish the verse that we might be made what why do we have to be made righteous because we're not and we cannot make ourselves. So God has to make us righteous in Christ. But there's something you missed. I'll read the verse. Listen microscopically. For he God hath made him Christ to be sin for us. That we sinners might be made what? The righteousness of God in him. What am I trying to say? Even though you and I have a sinful nature, when you come to Christ and give yourself to him, what 
Christ gives to us, or the Father, is his very righteousness. Not the righteousness of an angel. The righteousness of God. By so doing, God takes us back to what he said in Genesis 1.26. Let us make man. Aha. Uh -huh. And the image of God is righteousness. The reason why God does that to take us back to Genesis 1.26, God never changes his standard. God covers you with his righteousness. And looks at you as if you'd never sinned. And looks at Christ as a transgressor. That's why Christ died. It is an exchange we have to accept by faith. But it's plainly stated. Christ says, give me your sins. I'll give you my righteousness. And he covers you. And the father looks at you and sees what? Righteousness. He looks at Christ and sees what? My sins. God wants to do that right now. If someone will say, as the publican said, God, what? Come on, tell me. Be merciful to me, a sinner. You can leave this building covered in the righteous life of Christ. But you've got to understand, I need it because I cannot do it. Do you know how the Bible describes our righteousness? <laughs> yes. It's a very harsh verse. Isaiah 64, verse 6, but we are all as an unclean thing. And all our righteousness are as a filthy rag. We saw that in the case of the Pharisee. What did he say? I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all I possess. I'm not an extortioner. I'm not unjust. I'm not an adulterer. I am not like that publican. All of that filthy rags in the eyes of God. Because it was not done in Christ. The Bible says, many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not? prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works then will I profess unto them depart from me I never knew you ye that work yes Christ calls iniquity what we call good works because the only thing that clarifies us good in the eyes of God is what Jesus does in you What do I mean by what Jesus does in you? Go to uh, Matthew 5. No, go to John 6. John 6, 5 to 12. You have John 6. Did I say 6? John 15, sorry. John 15. We read from verse 1. The question I asked was, what is, what is meant by Christ doing it in you? And it's literal. It really happens. Whether we understand all the details or not. John 15, reading from verse 1. Read with me. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Let me pause. Sometimes it is God the Father who takes people out of the church. Because they're useless. They're bearing no fruit. He takes them out of the church. But they say, that the church threw me out, or the members discouraged me. No, the Father is cleansing his church. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it. He may put you to some trials that it may bring forth more fruit. Verse 3. Now ye are clean to the word which I have spoken unto you. Now, based on the first three verses, the branch refers to whom? Me and you. Mm -hmm. The vine refers to whom? 
Christ. That's the main trunk, the vine, the branches, you and I are the branches. Now, listen to what Christ tells the branches, us. Verse 4. What's the first word? Abide. The word abide means to stay, to remain. Coming to Christ is important. Staying in Christ is similarly important. You've got to stay. And so verse 4 of John 15, the very first word in the Greek, meno, stay, remain, continue, be consistent. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. When you give your life to Christ, now your challenge is to remain in Christ through prayer and the study of God's word chiefly. Abide in me, stay. Many people come to Christ to visit. Christ doesn't want visitors. He wants people who come to do what? Stay. Move in. When you come to Christ, bring your luggage. Stay. Christ says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. Verse 5, I am the vine, he the branches, he that abideth in me, and I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. Now, Jesus says, you abide in me. If that happens, I will produce the fruit. Not you. Because the fruits are the fruits of whom? The Spirit. How can a human being produce the fruits of the Spirit? You're asking for frustration. What a human being can do is pray. What a human can do, read God's word and obey it. Now we can do that. You cannot produce the fruits of the Spirit. They are the fruits of the Spirit. So Jesus says, if you stay connected I will produce the fruits. Now, let's go to John. Chapter, Matthew 5. Matthew 5. Our subject, the power of helplessness. No one has to remain controlled by sin. Nobody. A relationship, a relationship with Christ brings peace. Sin brings agony. Matthew 5. Let's read from verse 14. When you found it, say Amen. Read with me. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it on a bushel, under a, can, on a bushel, under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Now, read 16 carefully. Read for me. Let your light so shine that they may see your good works, which is light. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let's read again closely. Let your light so shine. It does not tell you shine. What does it tell you? Let the light shine. But what does Jesus say in John 8, 12? I am the light of the world. John 1, verse 9. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. In him was life. The life was the light of men. You and I have no light. We can shine. So the Bible tells us, let the light of Christ shine out of us. Because if I had light of mine own to shine, why would I need Jesus? I want to centralize Christ. You need Christ to shine. Because on this earth, Christ needed the Father to shine out of him. We must allow Christ to shine out of us. Let me show you what I mean. Go to John 14. Our subject, the power of helplessness. Go to John 14 with me as quickly as you can. 12 o'clock on the dot. I've been going for half an hour. We have time. I won't take all of it. What book did I say? John. Let's read from verse 9. Well, from verse 8. When you found it, say amen. Philip saith unto him, Lord, shew us the Father, and it sufficeth us. 
Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that have seen me have seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, she was the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father? And the Father in me. Keep reading. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. Finish the verse. But the Father, come on, that dwelleth in me, finish it. He, doeth, in other words, the Father shone out of Jesus. Now Jesus says, let me do what? Shine out of you. When you and I understand that, our frustrations decrease significantly because we realize our part of the bargain is to stay surrendered to Christ. His part is to produce the good works through us. You see, our limbs are the tools that are used to carry out the decisions of the will. Are you with me? Let me explain. If I decide to slap you, that decision starts where? In the will. But the will does not have an arm. Are you with me? The body has an arm, not the will. The will doesn't have a foot if I decide to kick you. The will makes the choice. Then the will expresses its decision through the body. Jesus Christ wants to control our will. Then he expresses his desires, how? Through us. He must control the will. The will is where you choose. You chose to come to this place. God bless you. That's the will. You're choosing to listen. That's the will. Now, when you come to Christ, that's what you give him. The will. It is with the will you choose to attend churches where people speak in tongues, even though it's not in harmony with God's word. You exercise your will. You exercise the will when you decide to stay late at that woman's house at 1 o'clock in the morning giving her a Bible study. It's the will. Christ wants that. That's what he wants. If you shoot someone with your right arm, the gun, you shoot him. And before you are tried, you get into an accident, you lose your right arm. Are you still tried? Oh, does the court say, well, his right arm is no longer in existence. We can't try him. It was just his right arm that shot the man, not him. Are you following me? This, as long as you have this, you go before the judge. If you lost both arms and both legs, you go to trial. Because the will made the decision. The, leg, the arm was just the instrument to carry out this. If you lost a, a kidney, you go before the judge. Mm-hmm. The will. That's what God wants. And so when God says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, then he says, exercise the will and do what? Choose life. Exercise your will and choose Christ. But I told you a few days ago to choose Christ is to choose the creator the Savior and the lawgiver. You can't choose Christ as one, not as the others. There are some people who want Christ as a Savior, not as a Lord. As a Savior, and he's both. As a Savior, he delivers us from sin. As Lord, he says, now do what I say. We don't like that. We want deliver from sin and let me live my life. That's not the way salvation works. And so today, Christ is offering you his righteousness. You can leave this place free from the burden of sin. You come to him. You say, Father, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. In your mercy, you've kept me alive. I've been touched by your word. I come to you, dear God. Save me. You do this from your heart. Christ will cover you, or the Father, with the righteousness of Christ and place your sin on Jesus Christ. There is a, a way I demonstrate that. You may have seen it in some of my sermons online. 
This world is a world of sin. Sometimes we make mistakes. We're still God's children. Let's call sin cow dung. Are you with me? On a farm, cow dung? Is that the word dung? And okay. You step into it. You make a mistake. What's on your shoe? But what is it? It's sin. You have to get rid of it. You walk into the God's kingdom, and God has a mat at the door. You know who that mat is? Jesus. And God tells you, before you enter my kingdom, wipe your feet. Wipe your feet. Where do you wipe your feet? On Jesus. Get rid of the dung of sin on Christ, right in his face. Then the Father says, come on in. For you. Because he loves you. Hell is to be avoided. You notice I'm being very calm and quiet this morning. Hell is to be avoided. Do you know how God will get rid of sinners? You ought to know. So that if it happens to you, you can't say you weren't told. Go to 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. Then shortly I'll make a call for you to accept the righteousness of Christ. Literally. Do you have 2 Peter chapter 3? Let's read from verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness. But is what? Long suffering to us word. Keep reading. Not willing that any should perish. You know why? God knows how terrible it will be when sinners are destroyed. And so he waits and he waits and he waits and he pleads and he calls and he sends meetings like these and he begs. Come, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, read verse 10. For the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall do what? Pass away with her, and the elements melt with fire. Now finish that verse. The earth also, and the works that are therein shall be, what are the works therein? Sin. Burned up. Let me tell you something about the fire of God when it burns sin. When a fire breaks out, the fire department sends the, 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 what do you call it, fire brigade, fire, the fire truck. And what do they do to the fire with water? They put it out. When Elijah was on Mount Carmel, remember that story? With all the priests of Baal, the priests of Baal, they offered their offering to Baal, and they cried for hours for Baal to come. He never came. I, Elijah said, he may be on vacation. Shout louder. They cried. They cut themselves. By the way, don't cut yourself. Don't cut yourself. And don't make a small cut and tell me it's small. Don't cut yourself. They cut themselves. They're bleeding. Baal never answered because Baal does not exist. When it was Elijah's turn to call upon his God, you know what he did? He dug a trench around the altar. And he said, pour water in the trench. Then pour water where? On the sacrifice. Then Elijah prayed. I'm talking about the fire of God. You see, water is used to put out fire. Are you following me? Are you following me? The fire of God, you need to avoid it. When Elijah prayed, God answered with fire. The fire consumed the water <laughs> in the trench around the offering and the offering. What am I saying? There is nothing on earth that can put out God's fire. Not water, not foam, not chemicals. It burns and burns until its object is achieved. This is not what people like to hear. But it's in the Bible. When you reject what happened on Calvary, and all the suffering it caused God and the Holy Spirit and Christ and the angels. Your punishment is harsh. Your punishment is proportional to what you've rejected. And so God waits. 
And he waits as if to say, I don't want to do this. I don't. Remember the, the call to prayer, the verse, Ezekiel 33, verse 11. Say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. And God says, turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. For why? Why will you die? Why are you so stubborn, says God, to go to hell when I offer you the joys of heaven? And so today Christ says to you, my father hath made me to be sin for you, that you might be made the righteousness of God in me. The righteousness of God. Listen to me as I end. Whatever God had in mind for Adam when he made him is what God has in mind for you now. That is the image of God. And it becomes more glorious with you and me because Adam did not have a sinful nature until he sinned. When God made him, he was sinless and perfect. We, with the sinful nature, can still have the image of God. That's a miracle that angels don't understand. How can someone with the sinful nature live a righteous life? Because God gives the person that life. And then when Christ comes, he destroys the sinful nature. God cannot make a new heaven and a new earth and populate it with sinners. He has to put in that world those who now have chosen Christ over sin. What's our subject? Jesus died to save you. Jesus died because the law had to be satisfied. The wages of sin, come on, is death. What is sin? Transgression of the law. If the law hadn't been that important, Christ need not have died. But Christ died for several reasons. One, to vindicate to the universe God's law cannot be tampered with. Christ died to show a human being can keep God's law. He lived that life and he demonstrated you can live an obedient life. Why? Because I came in your condition and obeyed. And he offers that perfect obedience to you. Which is the same thing as he offers you the righteousness of his father. There are other things God requires of us which are the same thing. Quickly, go to Hebrews 12 verse 10. Quickly, let me show you what I mean. When I say God requires of us exactly what he required of Adam, even though we have the carnal nature, and at that point, Adam did not have it. Hebrews 12, verse 10. For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, finished the verse, that we might be what? Partakers of his. God wants you to share in his holiness. Go to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter 1. Verse 4. Is it up there? Read with me. Wherefore are given unto us what? Exceeding great and precious promises. That by these what? You might be partakers of the divine nature. Stop. How do we partake of the divine nature? Through the promises. Where are the promises? In God's word. That's why I always give you the word. Hebrews 12.10, we should be partakers of God's holiness. First, Second Peter 1 verse 4, we must be partakers of God's divine nature. Now, go to Philippians 2 verse 5. Is it here? Not yet. Philippians 2 verse 5. We must have the holiness. We must connect to the divine nature. Now, Philippians 2 verse 5. You know the verse very well. What does it say? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. My brothers and sisters, may God give me the final words as I close off. You must have the same mind Jesus had. It's available to you. You must have the holiness Christ had on this earth. It's available to you. You must have 
You must partake of the divine nature which is natural to Christ. The holiness, divine nature, the mind. Which means your Father God has a high standard for you. High. Connect to my nature. Connect to my holiness. Have my mind. It's possible for someone of the carnal nature to partake in the nature of God, the holiness of God, and the mind of God. Is that what you want? People offer alcohol, we take it. People offer cigarettes, we take it. They offer us drugs, we take it. They offer us sexual immorality, we take it. They offer us bribes, we take it. God offers you his holiness, a part connection to his divine nature and his mind right where you sit and we don't believe it but I had to tell you I want you now to exercise your will and make a decision or choice I want to be covered in the righteousness of Christ if that's your choice, can I see your right hand or any hand you choose? Hands down. Did you mean that? Stand up. Then I have another question for you. It's uh, 16 after 12. We have time. How many of you go to church? Can I see your hands? You go to church somewhere. You go to church. May I see your hands? You go to church somewhere. All right, hands down. Listen very carefully. How many of you have never of your own free will said, Father, I give my life to you. Come into my heart. You've grown up in a church and you thought that made you a child of God. You have never of your own free will said, Father, I give my life to you. Come into my heart and control my life. If you've never done that and you'll do it now, come right here. Come with me. You've never done that. Consciously. Father, I give my life to you. Come into my heart. Come and do it now. Come. Come. You've never consciously said, Father, come into my life. Come and do it. Then I have another question for you. Another call. You've never done it. Come and do it. Come. While I'm waiting for you, I have another call. As I look at my life, past six months, nine months, 18 months, it has not been this. It has been that spiritually. I need to start all over with God. For someone, it may be, I need to be rebaptized. For someone else, it may be, I need to be baptized for the first time. My life, as I look at it, has not been this. It has been that, and I know that in here. And I want to say, Father, I want to start with you again, and this time, stay with you. If that applies to you, you come. I want to start all over with my Savior. Come. My life has not been what it should be, and I know it, and God knows it. Come. I want to start all over with my God. Come. 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 And there are many of you who ought to come. I have disappointed God as a lifestyle. I want to start all over with my God. Come. Come. Don't be afraid. Come. 
I know I have drifted from God. I've gone way off like the prodigal son. Even though I was physically sitting in that church, I was way off from God. I need to get it right. Come. Father, we're starting all over. Come. And I mean come seriously. So you leave this place with God. Those of you online, make the same decision, please. I know I have drifted from God way off. Today, I am coming back to a God who has missed me. And this time, I want to stay with him. Come. Don't let anyone hold you up. Just come. Make room for God's people as they slide out of the various rows. I want to start all over with my God. I have fooled the church. I have fooled my friends. I have fooled my parents. But God knows I have not been what he wanted me to be for a long time. Come, Father, we're starting all over. And this time, I want to get it right by your power. Come, come. There are many more who ought to come. Don't wait until tonight's service. You may not see tonight. Come now. Is the Spirit telling you to come? Don't disobey him. You come. The voice that tells you don't come is not the voice of God. Somebody else, come. I've drifted from God. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm tired of sin. I'm tired of falling. I'm tired of frustration of no spiritual growth. Come. Now come 100%. Don't ask your husband permission to come. Just come. This is you and God. Come. Ezekiel 18 verse 20 The soul that sinneth it shall die The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him It is personal, it is individual Christ died on that cross not for the world He died for you I'm sure you understand what I mean He died for you Yes the Bible says for God so loved the world But that won't help you until you personalize it God Christ died for you. And he's calling you this morning. What's the call? First call was, I have never consciously said, God, I give my life to you. I'm doing that now. The second call, I've drifted from God. Really drifted. I'm coming back. And I want to get it right. Come. 60 seconds and I take the next step. Come. 26 after 24 after 12. Come, come, God bless you. Those of you coming, God bless you. 60 seconds I give you. Now 50 seconds. Come. I want to be an obedient child of God. Come, sister. Come, come, come. God bless you. God bless you. 40 seconds. Come, come. Don't stay back. Don't be cool because hell is not cool. Come. 30 seconds. Come. Aren't you glad God has kept you alive despite all the things you've done to him? Yes. He's kept you alive despite all we have done to God. He's kept us alive. Come. Let God make you sorry for your sins. 20 seconds. Come. Come. 15 seconds. I'm coming back to my God because I know I have left him by my behavior come there are more coming they said 10 seconds I'll stretch it there are more coming come all of heaven is rejoicing I want you to know that the devil is upset he's keeping some from coming come just say to yourself I am going and come just say that exercise the will I'm going come Come, sister. Come, brother. Come, my brother. Come. Come. Those of you online, you come in your own way. God will understand. Wherever you are, any country, you hear the call, you come. You've left God. You've gone far away in your heart. Come back. Come back. When the prodigal son came back to the father, the father saw him and ran to him. And God has run to you this morning. All right. I have to pray. Here's what I want you to do, those of you who came. While I'm talking, you keep coming. 
Tell God, you're sorry you drifted. Tell him that. Then tell him, Father, I have come back. Please put your arms around me and pull me into your bosom. You tell that to God. I am sorry I have drifted. I have come back. Father, wrap your arms around me. Cover me with your righteousness. I give myself to you again 100%. You say that prayer 15 seconds, then I will pray. The rest of you keep praying. The others who need to come, come even while this is going on. Here comes a sister. Come sister, I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you. God has been waiting, I can wait. Come. This is life and death, it really is. This is life and death. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. God bless you. Heads bowed, eyes closed, you may come while I pray. First, my friends, offer the prayer I told you. Say to God, Father, I am sorry I drifted. Forgive me, dear God, for leaving you. I come back to you. Wrap your arms around me. Draw me into your bosom and cover me with your righteousness in Christ. You say that prayer right now, 15 or 20 seconds. Holy Father, I cannot convict anyone. That's the work of your Spirit. He has moved on those who have come, and heaven is rejoicing. Father, there are others who should come, and they're struggling. It is not a sin to struggle, Father, but remaining in a struggle too long may bring the person to the point where he or she just never comes. In the name of Jesus Christ, dear God, move that person who is still struggling. Move that person now. That person about whom I just prayed, come now. Leave your seat and come. Bring the struggle to Christ, come. Someone else has to come. And I don't know who you are, but God knows. Come. Sister, if it's you, come. Brother, if it's you, come. Come. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. God bless you. I really mean that. God bless you. Somebody, come, sister. Uh, God bless you. God bless you. God, come, sister. Uh, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God, sister, God bless you. God bless you. There is room in heaven for all of you. No one can take your place. There's too much room in hell. Occupy the place in heaven God has for you. Come, come, come. Sister, God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? Let me finish the prayer. After I finish the prayer, I want all of you to just go th up those stairs to the back room. I want to offer a special prayer for you. Are you with me? Go through here, back room, go through there quickly. Five minutes, I'll let you go. I want to pray for you. Anybody else coming before I close the prayer? Online, you come. You come. Sister, God bless you. Someone else needs to come. Let God be stubborn in his desire to save you. Don't be stubborn in your desire to be destroyed. Come. Someone else coming? I'm about to pray. Someone else coming? Yes, yes, someone else is coming. Be the rest of you, pray, pray, pray. There are many more who need to come. The devil is working, but we want the Spirit of God to work more powerfully. Come. God bless you. God bless you. My little brother, I'm so happy to see you. God bless you. God bless you. Come, sister, come. Father, I'm coming back. If I go so far, my case becomes hopeless. Come, my lovely sister. You, Jesus is your brother. Come to him and God is your father. How is Christ your brother? He became human. Come, sister, come. Come. Uh, come. You see, they're coming. They're coming. Some people have to take time to think. Come. Come while you think. Come. Just say, I'm going. And come. That easy. The spirit will move you. Come. God bless you. I know I have to let you go. Come. Come. You spend much more time watching soccer, so just stay where you are. Come, come, sisters, come. That's right, come right down. God bless you. Come right down. You're coming in the right direction. Come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I am coming back to my father. 
I can't fool myself. I cannot fool God. Come, brother, come. God needs strong men in this. Come, 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 come. Some of you must be praying because people are moving. Come. God bless you. Ah, here comes another strong young man. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I really mean it. Come, sister. Come, come, come. Ah, thank you, Father, for the spirit moving on the hearts of your children whom you love. Thank you, God. Father, bring a few more. Bring a few more. There are more who still need to come. Come, my brother. Come. You're wearing white, the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Ah, come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Keep praying. Keep praying. Somebody else. Online, you come. You come. In your own way, come. I am coming back to my God or I'm coming for the first time. It's the same heaven. Come, brother. Come. Come, Father, strengthen those who are standing. Strengthen them. And answer their prayers as they pray for those who need to come. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? You can come while I close the prayer. I'm watching to see if anyone else is yielding to the Spirit and coming. Just say, Father, I'm going. And come. Anybody else? And comes, ah, sister, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I really mean that. Come, my brother. Come. Ah, come, brother. Come, come, come. Ah, come, anybody else? A young sister, a young brother, an older sister. Come, come, my brother, come, come. A li an upright life is possible through Jesus Christ. The devil has too many representatives. God needs some more. Come, anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Come, every time you come, the angels rejoice. Here comes a daughter of God whom he loves and wants to save. Come. God has been waiting for you. Come. It could be he said this meeting for you. Those online, keep coming. Keep coming. Those online. The rest of you, keep praying. This is serious. Life and death. I know I have to close the prayer. I know that. But give me a little while. Come, sister. Bring that baby. Bring that baby. Let that baby come under the presence of the Spirit. Bring that baby. Bring that baby. Come, sister. Come. Anybody else? Okay. Remember my instruction as soon as I close the prayer. My, maybe my, as my brothers could help me. Just lead these stairs, take to the back. Those stairs take you to the same place. I pray with you five minutes. I let you go. Come, sister, come. I just caught you in the corner of my eye. But Jesus saw you long before that. Come. God bless that baby. God bless that baby. Bless that little boy, Father. Please bless him right now right now with his hands upraised as if to say I give my life to Christ bless that little boy father please and any little child online in the arms of the mother who has come bless that child now I'll finish the prayer come while I'm praying father we thank you for those who came they had a struggle they came others need to come some will come when we're back in this room let them come in the name of Jesus Christ their God hold on to everyone who came that they never leave you again. Now, Father, let the angels guide them to that door on my right and that door on my left. Five minutes is all I need, God, maybe fewer. I want to pray just for them. And that prayer will cover those online. Hear me, God. Take all the credit, all the glory. Give us the blessings we need. In Jesus' name, I pray. Let all God's people say amen and amen. Right through that door. Right through that door. Someone guide them, guide them, someone guide them. Right through that door, right through this door. I'm coming to be with you. I'll five minutes, no more than that. God is good. God is good. And all the time, pray for me while I meet with God's people.